identified, a 26-year-old British man. The world has seen him wearing that mask in those gruesome videos from ISIS, taking the lives of so many hostages, Americans among the killed. Tonight, our team right there in London, outside the home, curtains drawn, authorities on the scene in that West London neighborhood. And this evening, we hear from President Obama, his reaction, as U.S. authorities learn quickly about this young man from a middle-class family. He went to college, studied to be a computer programmer. ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, leading us off tonight. The identity of the world's most wanted man is confirmed tonight as a 26-year-old, college-educated British citizen, Mohammed Mwazi, whose masked face and voice have come to symbolize pure evil. Our knife will continue to strike the necks of your people. President Obama today vowed to get him in an interview with ABC station KOMO. Eventually, uh, if you hurt an American, uh, you're going to be brought to justice in some fashion. It was soon after the beheading of American James Foley in August that U.S. and British authorities first figured out who the masked man was, with his facial characteristics and British accent helping to give him away. I'm back, Obama. But the U.S. was helpless to stop him, as American Stephen Sutloff and Peter Kasich, plus two Britons and then two Japanese hostages, became his next victims. The name is just a very small piece of the overall identity. The real goal is identifying where he is, who his network of uh, associates is, and, and then being able to, to take action against him inside a place like Syria where we have a lack of, of resources. And Wazi's name was kept secret in hopes he would reveal his location by communicating with his family back in West London where he grew up after emigrating from Kuwait where he was born. Detectives from Scotland Yard were at the house today, and so was ABC News correspondent Hamish MacDonald. I want to take you to have a look at the house itself because clearly uh, the world's media has been camped here, talking to neighbours, looking for any signs of life. Uh, this is the house uh, that police were knocking on the door of. Tonight, the family and friends of American hostage Steve Sotloff said they hope he is captured alive. We would like to see him in a court of law, in the dock, being charged with his crimes and having to answer for what he did. If he, if he simply killed in an airstrike, we won't know anything else. So this was something today, Brian. Authorities revealed that they knew who they were dealing with shortly after these videos surfaced. But you've learned tonight that they actually had him on their radar for years now. That's right. Since 2009, British security services have been tracking him. He even complained to friends. They tried to recruit him as an informant. But tonight, he's very much a man with a target on his back. All right, Brian Ross leading us off tonight. Brian, thank you. Breaking overnight, the executioner known as Jihadi John has been identified. He's been the face of so many of those vicious ISIS videos. ABC's Brian Ross here with what we know right now. Good morning, Brian. Well, good morning, George. He's been the most wanted and reviled man on the planet. A senior U.S. official involved in the search for Jihani John this morning confirms to ABC News that his name is Mohammed Mwazi. The BBC and the Washington Post are reporting this morning that Mwazi is a native of Kuwait who grew up in a well-to-do family in West London. Currently in his mid-twenties, he's a college graduate with a degree in computer programming. He reportedly went to Syria to join ISIS just three years ago. And Wazi is the man seen in one horrifying ISIS execution video after another, including those of at least three Americans, two Britons, and two Japanese who were beheaded by ISIS. Authorities had analyzed his facial and voice characteristics to determine his identity, which had been kept secret until this morning, as U.S. British intelligence agencies sought to track him and his relatives in hopes he could be captured or killed. This morning, British officials declined to comment on the reports about Mwazi, but according to people we've talked to involved in the search, they have known who he is behind that mask for several months, George. So they've known for several months. How does this affect the hunt for him? Well, this complicates it because they've lost the element of surprise in trying to track him, but also it turns up the heat substantially on ISIS and Mr. Mwazi. Yeah, they might learn more about him. Exactly. Okay, Brian Ross, thank